to the 12. Oh, it already froze on me. <laughs> Peace to the 12. Word of the day. All right. Those of you familiar, I did a, I did a uh, video a month ago on the, on the word ghetto. And I made a playlist and I'm titling it Word of the Day. So in that one, you know, the word of the day was the word ghetto, which actually goes back to um, a district by the which they put Israelites in. Okay, you can go watch that video from what that. But the word of the day today is cannibal. All right, man eater. All right, kana ba'al, which we're going to go on this word. All right. So what is a cannibal according to the etymology? A human that eats human flesh, a savage, a cannibal. All right. Now, this is where they allege that where cannibal came from. Cannibalism. The eating of human flesh by human beings from cannibal. All right. Now, let's see where cannibal really comes from. All right. For those of you that don't know. The word cannibal comes from the word uh mean the word cannibal actually means priest of baal all right cannibal from the chaldean kana baal priest of baal kana is emphatic form of khan a priest okay and just to show you right this is the word priest kahan all right you have to remember this is in yiddish so it would be khan kana and then Baal, Kana Baal, Kana means priest, and Baal means, uh, is talking about that entity, which the word Baal means Lord, I did a whole video on um, Baal worship, okay, y'all can go watch that, it wasn't that long ago, alright, and by the way, you see how he put Kana Baal, and it's spelled B-A-L, well, that lets you know that Baal can be spelled with just B-A-L as well. And I've mentioned this before, but guess who um guess who has this word ball in their uh clothing? Balenciaga. Alright, and Balenciaga literally means from Latin to English, literally means Baal is the king. That's what Balenciaga means. Alright. And this is the woman, Balenciaga designer, Lada. Volkova, all right, and she has the two children. She's letting you know what that means, all right. And we're and we're gonna find out what the priest of Baal do, all right, because we figured we already know cannibal now means priest of Baal, man eater, all right. Now why would a priest of Baal be associated with cannibalism? Well, we're gonna go into it. This is from the book, uh, the Two Babylons by Alexander Hislop. This is an insert from the book. I believe it's like page two twenty or something. Um, all right, it says, hence the priest of Nimrod of Baal. Matter of fact, I'm going to start from the top. We find these two things were parts of one and one and the same system. The God whom the Druids worshiped was Baal. You see that? And that's where you get the title of Beltane because another word for Baal is Baal. Okay? As the blazing Baal fire show. And the last cited passage proves the children were offered in sacrifice to Baal. All right, so they offered children. They sacrificed children to Baal. You can read about that in Jeremiah. Um, I included that in the Baal worship video, so you can go watch that. Um, but when the fruit of the body was thus offered, it was for the sin of the soul. All right, and we're going to go down to here. Hence, the priest of Nimrod or the priest of Baal were necessarily required to eat the human, to eat of the human sacrifices. So after they sacrificed the human, they would in fact eat the body parts, which is what a cannibal. What a cannibal, human that eats human flesh. Kana Baal, priest of Baal. All right, necessarily required to eat of the human sacrifices, and thus it has come to pass that Kana Baal, the priest of Baal, is the established word in our tongue for a devourer. Of human flesh. Yeah, the word kana is emphatic for the word priest. Kana is the priest. All right. And the scriptures speak. And by the way, most of you already know this, but Baal was the supreme male, 
divinity of the Phoenicians, aka the Canaanites. All right, and the connect and the Canaanites were known for drinking blood, sacrificing children. They were known for doing heavy witchcrafts, um, all type of things. And we know the scriptures are against drinking blood too. I'm gonna get that. All right, which is which is still really in the form of cannibalism. But um, let's go to Genesis nine and four. But flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall you not eat. And surely your blood of your lives will I require at the hand of every beast, where I require it. And at the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother, where I require the life of man. All right. So the flesh with the life thereof, meaning the flesh with the blood, you cannot eat. We're not supposed to eat blood. It also says that in Leviticus 17. All right. And whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel, the strangers that sojourn among you, that eateth any manner of blood, I will even set my face against that soul that eateth blood, and will cut him off from among his people. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for you, uh, for the soul. Therefore I say unto the children of Israel, No soul of you shall eat blood, neither shall any stranger that sojourn among you eat blood. And whatsoever man there be of the children of Israel, or the strangers that sojourn among you, which hunteth, and catcheth any beast or fowl that may be eaten, he shall even pour out the blood thereof, and cover it with dust. For it is the life of all flesh, the blood of it is for the life thereof. Therefore I said unto the children of Israel, You shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh, for the life of all flesh is the blood thereof. Whosoever eateth it shall be cut off. Alright, so you can't eat anything with blood and you can't drink blood. All right, Leviticus 19, 26, you shall not eat anything with blood, neither shall you use enchantment nor observe times. All right, which the Canaanites were into doing. Now, you know, I could have ended it already to find it the word of day, but I'm going to keep going because I want to touch on uh, the fact that is cannibalism still around and do people still do it for a ball? Absolutely. Absolutely they do. All right. And just, just you know, in Acts 15 and 19, it still tells you to abstain from blood, as well as Acts 21. I just wanted to mention that as well. Now, do people do people still do this today? Absolutely, believe it or not. And I'm going to tell you guys right now that um, what I'm going to have at the end of this video might sound hard to believe. It might sound far-fetched, but um, it's, it's a real account that was given. All right, but that's towards the end of this video. Let's go to Leviticus 18 real quick. Now, this is what the Lord was telling us to do. All right. The Most High. All right, we'll go to Leviticus 18, and I'm going to start at 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, I am Yahweh your God. Whenever you see Lord in all caps, that means Yahweh. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do? And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whether I bring you, shall ye not do? Neither shall you walk in their ordinances. So in Leviticus 18, he's letting you know, don't do after the workings of the Egyptians, nor do after the workings of the Canaanites, a.k.a. the Phoenicians. And I'm about to show you what they were doing. All right, all the things he's going to tell us not to do, which the Canaanites and the Egyptians were doing. You shall do my judgments and keep my ordinances to walk therein. I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am Yahweh. None of you shall approach to any that is near of kin to him to uncover their nakedness. I am the Lord. All right. And that's what they was doing. They practiced um, heavy incest. But watch this. We're going to go down to verse 24. Same chapter. Leviticus 18 verse 24. Um, actually, I skipped one. We're going to go to verse 21. All right. This is what they're doing. This is what he's telling us not to do. They were practicing human sacrifice. Leviticus 18 and 21. And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech, neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. So they practice um, letting their seed pass through the fire, human sacrifice. They also practice homosexuality. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down thereto. It is confusion. So they practice bestiality. All right. The Egyptians, you can look this up. The Egyptians practice bestiality for a fact. 
all right and even to this very day the maasai tribe all right uh, the maasai tribe i believe they have sex with um I don't believe I don't remember if it's a donkey or if it's a mule or a cow or something like that. You can look that up. All right, and the Nilotic people are the descendants of the actual Egyptians. I did a video not too long ago titled "Real Egyptians." You can watch that for that proof. But um, defile not ye yourselves in any of these things, for in all these the nations are defiled which I cast out before you. So the nations were defiled with doing these things, these activities. That are listed and we're told not to do after these other nations all right now let's go down to let's go down to four um for all my nations um excuse me for all these abominations have the men of the land done which were before you and the land is defiled all right so we're not we're not to do after these people and even to this very day look the messiah still drink blood they still drink blood. Look at Esau. <laughs> Look at Esau doing after the workings of 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 uh, a Hamites, man. Drinking blood. That that practice is still around. Now, I'm 11 minutes in. Now, I want to touch on something uh, that that came to my mind. See, I was going to do this video a couple of days ago, and then I went to sleep, and I had a dream about a song that used to be out. All right, so I was given a dream for a song that used to be out that I remember when I was a kid. That song was a song by Kesha. All right, there was a pop singer named Kesha, uh, and the song was called Cannibal. All right, the song was called Cannibal, and it was performed by this pop star named Kesha. And I decided to go ahead and include this because she's she's basically letting you know that she is a man eater. Okay, allegedly, <laughs> she's letting you know that she's a man eater. A.K.A. a cannibal. She made a song called Cannibal. And even this picture right here, which I'm going to touch on this at the end of the video. But this picture uh, lets you know that she's a victim of mind control. She's a victim of MK Ultra. All right. And for those that think I'm tripping or those that think, what the hell is this nigga talking about? Uh, you know, you can Google MK Ultra. It's a it's a real thing. It really happened. It was exposed that the United States government was practicing with mind control practices. You can even look up sub projects. Subproject 73, Subproject 130, I believe. They have many subprojects, which is uh, given to us by the Freedom of Information Act that lists certain practices that were done as a form of mind control, i.e. MK Ultra. Now, I say all that to say this. This photo here, which I'm guessing this is our album cover, this photo has a split in the middle. What is this to in what is that to entail or to show the viewing audience? That she has split personalities. They did a show called Split. A movie called Split. Alright. And they also touched on this in the movie Joker. Starring Joaquin Phoenix. Alright. Where through through torture. People be, uh, people develop split personalities. Alright. Alternative personalities. And that's what this was meant to ensure. To let you know. That she is a victim of split personalities. Due to M. Keltra. And she also made this song called Cannibal. Now, we're going to do the lyrics. All right. Now, stay with me. These are the lyrics to the song Cannibal that she made. This is her live performance that she did. These are the, these are the lyrics. The song came out in 2010. This is the lyrics to the song Cannibal by Kesha. Ra, I have a heart. I swear I do. All right. I'm going to go down to here. Where is it at? Uh... I'm going to eat you, fool. She says, I eat boys up, breakfast and lunch. Then when I'm thirsty, I drink their blood. Carnivore animal, I am a cannibal. I eat boys up, you better run. And then she sings that she's a cannibal. Then she says, whenever you tell me I'm pretty, that's when the hunger really hits me. Your little heart goes pitter-patter. I, I want your liver. On a platter. Now you would have. <laughs> who the hell would make this song? Man? All right. But she's letting you know. That she's a cannibal. And I got to start doing. The, uh, breaking down these words. And I also got to start breaking down. These pagan. These pagan deities as well. And what they. What they. What the practices of them. In, uh, ensures. All right. What you have to do. All right. I say that because you see this. With Doja Cat sticking her tongue out. Uh, Megan Thee Stallion sticking her tongue out. 
there's a pagan goddess by the name of Kali, K-A-L-I, and Kali has her tongue out. The tongue is out for drinking blood, all right, for blood drinking, but I will do a video on that when I do a video on Kali, all right, but she was a victim of MKUltra, I have no doubt about it, but I'm just going to say allegedly, you know, but this is what happened a couple years ago, all right, Kesha admitted that she was sexually assaulted and also drugged by this man. She admitted that she was drugged. She was forced to drug. She was coerced to do drugs. And she was sexually assaulted. That's what she admitted. And those are practices that are in MK Ultra. All right. Kesha's allegation cost him $46 million. Y'all can look this up on your own. All right. So she was letting you know. That she was, you know, she's one of them. And that's where Valentine's Day, Valentine's Day is an illusion of cannibalism. That's why they give out the heart. All right. In Rome, it was called the Lupercalia. They try to, they try to say that uh, Lupercalia has nothing to do with Valentine's Day. Yet, they're, that the days are, are one and the same. All right. But this is, they used to have a sacrifice on Mount, what was it? Mount uh, Lacopolis, I believe. All right, and they proved it. Skeletal remains confirm ancient Greeks engaged in human sacrifice. All right, and as you see, Mount Lycaon. All right, Mount Lycaon. That's where you get the term lichen or werewolf. All right, in the show Supernatural, they had a so supernatural where they had werewolves, and the werewolves only ate your heart. All right, in that show Supernatural with the Winchesters, the the werewolf only ate the heart. Why? Because that was a practice. Uh, that's where the term lichen comes from. All right, the heart eaters, cannibalism. All right, they 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 did engage in human sacrifice. The Greeks did, as well as the Minoans. All right, who, the Minoans were so-called black. By the way, go watch my Black Europeans video for more on that. All right, the Lupercalia. Like I said, Valentine's Day. Uh, the Lupercalia was back in the day. Now look, Lupercalia was an ancient pagan festival held each year on Rome. In Rome on February 15th. Although Valentine's Day. Now look. It says Lupercalia was held on February 15th. Now is it Valentine's Day on the 14th of February? And they try to say there's no comparison. You gotta be out of your mind man. But nonetheless. Lupercalia was a bloody. Violent and sexually charged celebration. A wash with animal sacrifice. Yeah there was human sacrifices too going on. Allegedly. <laughs> Um, let's go here. Ritual sacrifice. Lupercalia rituals took place in a few places. Lupercal Cave and Palatine Hill. And within the Roman open air, public meeting place called the, the Commutium. The festival began at Lupercal Cave with the sacrifice of one or more male goats, a representation of sexuality, and a dog. The sacrifices were performed by Luperci, a group of Roman peace. Afterwards, the foreheads of two naked Luperci were smeared with the animal's blood using the bloody sacrificial knife. The blood was then removed with a piece of milk-soaked wool as the Luperci laughed. In ancient Rome, feasting began after the ritual sacrifice. When the feast of Lupercal was over, the Luperci cut strips, also called thongs, or fabrua, that's where you get the term February from, by the way, fabrua, of goat Hide from the newly sacrificed goats. They then ran naked or nearly naked around Palatine, whipping any woman within striking distance with the thongs. All right. And in this show, Sabrina, which I haven't seen, but there's a show called Sabrina, and apparently on Netflix, it's about a witch, by the way. And in this show, Sabrina, it they they, they actually did the practice of, of uh, Lupercalia in that as well. It says, I got to see check this out, man. You brothers let me know if you've seen this show, what it's about. It says, here's something that irks me about the Church of Night in the chilling adventures of Sabrina. It is constantly turning sexy, empowering rituals into repressive, rapey, or cannibalistic ones. Now, why is it why is it turning the quote-unquote sexy, empowering rituals into rapey, cannibalistic ones? Because that what was actually, that's actually what was occurring, believe it or not. All right, and that lets me know that this show is probably speaking fact. I heard that they have the Baphomet on this show, if I'm not mistaken. 
Though Lupercalia doesn't involve witches feasting on each other, hey, that's what you say. It's got its own problematic conclusion, one that might actually have its origins in the real history of Lupercalia. So there are a few. I got to check this episode out. You brothers let me know if you've seen it. All right, Lupercalia. All right. Um, I got to check that out. It was page 232 where I got the uh, Baal priest thing from. Let's keep going. Um, And the Canaanites, let's get some more insight on the Canaanites and what they did. Then I'll touch back on Kesha. Um, Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14. And this was an occasion to deceive the world for men serving either calamity or tyranny did ascribing onto stones and stocks of incommunicable name. I'm going to go down to verse 23. Wisdom of Solomon 14 to 23. For whilst they slew their children of, in sacrifices or used secret ceremonies or made reveling of strange rites. So they did strange rites, strange rituals. All right, let's go to another one. Wisdom of Solomon 12, verse 4. This is talking about the Canaanites. I'm going to start at 3, actually. All right, Wisdom of Solomon chapter 12 and verse 3. For it was thy will to destroy by the hands of our fathers both those old inhabitants of thy holy land. Whom thou hatedest for doing most odious works of witchcrafts and wicked sacrifices. And also those merciless murderers of children and devourers of man's flesh and the feasts of blood. So that lets you know that, can that, that the Canaanites were cannibals who ate man's flesh and drank blood as well as sacrificed children. And they were also into heavy witchcraft. Like in Sabrina, like I said, the Sabrina probably was dropping some gems, letting you know, man. Um, and look, Baal, like I said, another word for Baal is Baal. All right, the Aramaic word for Baal is Baal. All right, that's where you get Baal Tain from. All right. Um, and there's a woman by the name of Marina Abramovich, and she has something called spirit cooking, where she alleges to cook. Mocked meats. All right, you can see the fake human head, and they eat this mocked meat. All right, and look, you can see that she's a witch. This is a Marina Abramovich, and you know who's buddy buddy with Marina Abramovich? That wicked Negro, Jay Z. All right, and let me go back to this bell too. Uh, bell meaning Baal. When it says, uh, "There's a show what the Fresh Prince of Bell Air," or which is really letting you know that Will Smith played the Fresh Prince of Bell. All right, or the Fresh Prince of Baal. All right, so it's all throughout media. Now, going back on this Kesha thing, going back on this Kesha thing, who, who just said that she was a cannibal in the song, and I said that she was an MK Ultra asset, which she is, according to me, allegedly. That's just my belief, you know. But um, let's go to this book, Thanks for the Memories. All right, Thanks for the Memories by Bryce Taylor. All right, this is a woman who, who says that she is a victim of MKUltra and she's a survivor. All right, she's going to tell you the practices that occurred as she was um, a part of MKUltra. All right, this is uh, right here. It says, uh, historical overview, mind control in the modern context. U.S. government scientists... Spurred on the reports of American prisoners of war being brainwashed in North Korea, were proposing an urgent top secret research program on behavior modification. Drugs, hypnosis, electroshock, lobotomy, all were to be studied as part of the vast U.S. effort to close the mind control gap. So in their culture, they did drug, they used drugs, hypnosis, electroshock therapy, lobotomy, um, torture. This is all documented. All right, and like I said, Kesha alleged, I didn't include the article, but y'all can look it up. Kesha alleged that this man, who is more than likely her handler, that this man not only assaulted her sexually, but also used to drug her to control her. All right, and I got to do a damn video on all the damn uh, sexual misconducts that have been reported over the years, according to these celebrities. You'll find out that it's a lot of people. All right. The CIA and other agencies use prisoners, drug addicts, 
mental patients, college students, soldiers, even bar patron, patrons, in the vast range of government-run experiments to test the effects of everything from radiation, LSD, and nerve gas to intense electric shops and prolonged sensory deprivation. All right, this is all documented. This is in the book. Again, thanks for the memories. Uh, this woman uh, alleged to be an M-Culture survivor, and I believe her. All right, now look. Back to this cannibalism thing, right? Now, this is what she said. Well, actually, I'm going to keep st stay on the drug thing real quick. Let you know, they've been feeding people drugs. All right, this isn't a new practice. They've been doing it from, from since old. A brief history of control. The mystery religions of ancient Egypt, Greece, India, and Babylon helped lay a foundation for occultism. Occultism means hidden knowledge. One of the earliest writings given reference to occultism is the Egyptian Book of the Dead. A compilation of rituals explicitly describing methods of torture and intimidation to create trauma. The use of potions, drugs, and the casting of spells, hypnotism, ultimately resulting in the total enslavement of the initiate. Yeah, an MK Ultra slave. Alright. I believe they call the, the I believe they call the women beta programmed. Sex kittens, I believe that's what they call them in MK Ultra Pro. I'm going to do videos on MK Ultra. All right. I'm doing one right now, technically. Now you go down to here. Um, New Orleans therapist Valerie Wolf. Actually, hold on. These have been the main ingredients for a part of occultism known as Satanism throughout the ages. So Satanism stole Egyptian Book of the Dead's knowledge to cast spells through drugs and hypnotism to create an enslaved initiate. New Orleans therapist Valerie Wolf introduced two of her patients before the President's Committee on Human Radiation Experiments on March 15, 1995 in Washington, D.C. The astonishing testimony made by these two brave women included accounts of German doctors, torture, drugs, electroshock, hypnosis, and rape, besides being exposed to an undetermined amount of radiation. Both Wolf and her patients stated they recovered the memories of this abuse without regression or hypnosis techniques. So they they, they said it themselves, and this was proven in 1995, Washington, D.C. Two people, victims of mind control. All right. Um, monarch program and further condition the victim's mind and enhance through hypnotism, double bind coercion, pleasure pain, uh, reversals, Food, water, sleep, and sensory deprivation. Along with various drugs, which alter certain cerebral functions in the brain. Alright, so I just wanted to keep going. Stephen King was mentioned. But, um... Now, this is her talking about the, uh, the rituals that occurred to her. This is her testimony. Alright, she says... A man ripped my clothes off and sodomized me while another guy watched it, watched as it was filmed. Then I was chained up, whipped, and filmed more. They liked it when I cried out. They said I had to in order to make a good film, but I really wanted to be quiet and keep all to myself so it would ruin the film. So this is what they were doing to her, man. They Now, now this is explicit, so warning. They put a baby on a wooden table and killed her while I was being graped. And they said her lifeblood was filling me and that I like taking the baby's life into me. All right. See the lifeblood. Remember the scripture said the life is in the blood. All right. Going down to here. I didn't really. I didn't want them to hurt the baby ever, but I had to smile and laugh while they filmed it or they said I would be killed also. They made these snuff films often with babies or little girls. The younger, the purer, the men said. They believed fetuses were the best to get the purest, untouched lifeblood. They often ingest the flesh afterwards and sometimes the heart. Like I told you, the ritual of the werewolf was someone who ate hearts while it was still beating. It was terrifying, vile, and disgusting. See that? They're they letting you know that that ancient Greek practice, that's still around. All right? And, after they, and even with the heart, what they do, and they fed it to me for the filming. So they made her eat the heart. All right, believe it or not. And this is according to her. This is according to her testimony. All right. Um, let's go down to here. Um, I was involved in endless rituals 
actually I'm gonna start. Their belief was that these cannibalistic and sexual acts would transfer the energy or life force from a victim to them in order to make them more powerful. I was involved in endless rituals that included being burned with candles, having crucifixes jammed up my hoo-ha. As I lay on altar or hung upside down on a cross, having pins inserted into every area of my body, including my um, uh, vajayjay in the roof of my mouth and having animals and babies killed in front of me and being forced to eat their flesh and drink their blood or urine. Look, see that? The inner circle members wore, wore black robes and participated in sexual orgies and the killing and ingesting of humans and animal flesh. This is according to her, man. You know, and this is graphic. This is crazy, but hey, it is what it is. I'm going to get one more book before I get up out of here. All right, it's another book called Trance. Formation of America, the true life story of CIA mind control slave by Kathy O'Brien with Mark Phillips. So this woman, Kathy O'Brien, she was another victim of MKUltra, and she's going to let you know what she experienced. OK, according to her. She says in 1971. New York Times reported a story of, on the Central Intelligence Agency, CIA and occult research the basis of which was gained through a collection of documents released by the U.S. government printing office under the Freedom of Information Act. Yeah, so these files are out, the Freedom of Information Act. This was a report to Congress and clearly showed that the CIA, so in these files, it clearly shows that the CIA was interested in the cause and the effect of clinical findings that occult religions practiced have on black arts practitioners and of the observers of mind a particular interest to the cia were the heightened levels of suggestibility that certain occult rituals produced in the minds of the practitioners cannibalism and blood rituals were ranked highest in the order of importance to their research now this is according to the cia all right central intelligence agency 1971 new york times all right, this is according to her. Let's go down to here, right? She states, um, this is some wild stuff, man. Cox ordered me to kiss the railroad bum goodbye, then shot him between the eyes while I was still only inches away. He then used the machete to chop off the man's hands, which he put in a Ziploc bag. He then led up, he then led us up the rickety stairs into the lower of the old deport depot. There, Jack Green. All right, so that's a, there goes a celebrity right there. Jack Green, his band members, and others dressed in black robes were gathered around a black leather altar in a room lit by candles and draped in red velvet. In total shock, I was laid on the altar and subjected to grape and torture. While the participants indulged in sex, blood, and cannibalistic rituals. The next day I woke up on Cox's couch, vaguely aware that I had suffered from a bad nightmare. When I stood up, I passed out from the blood loss. I was bleeding profusely from my vajayjay. Alright, and this is Jack Green. Alright, a uh, country singer, singer and songwriter. He had a band. So she said she saw him attend this ritual. This is according to her. All right, that's that's it on that for now. That's the end of this video on cannibalism. You believe, hey, I, I say this to say this, man. The, the, the devil, when we tell you that a certain man is the devil, all right, we just ain't saying that because it's fun to say. All right. You'd be surprised what goes on, man. I mean, just look up the amount of people that go missing every year. Where do you think these people that go missing go? They're not all going into so-called uh, sex trafficking. They're going, they're, they're going for, for, for other rituals, um, all type of things, victims of, uh, new victims of the MK ultra project, all type of things, man. You'd be surprised, but yeah, that's, that's, that's cannibalism. The word, word of the day, cannibal. And with that, you know, I say peace to the 12. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to the most high Yahweh in the name of his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. I want to say Shalom, which means peace to you people listening and learning, to you brothers doing this work of truth and sincerity, and to you elders that's been doing this thing before me, man. To you, I say Shalom. And with that, 
I'm gone. Peace. Crazy world.